Hello everybody, this is Trust and Lies here with episode 3 of the Custom NPCs tutorial. Uh, today we're going to be going over the uh, health uh, stats. And I have Esfrenari with me. Hello! Um, Josh and DJ could not make it today um, between internet problems and scheduling conflicts. So Sai will be my less experienced guy here. <clears throat> so if you think of any questions that you think people may have side just shout them out absolutely but uh we'll hop right into it okay so you guys should remember how to get your npc wand how to create it um just so we know which one's which i'm naming mine trust and i'll even give it my texture and you can go ahead and create your side sure thing And to select my texture, I just hit the texture uh, button. Yep, and it and should switch to player, and then you need to type in your name. Uh, capitalization matters. Ah, very good. All right, well, he's getting that set up. Um, up at the top, we have these different tabs, and today we're moving on from display and going into stats. Um, we're going to break these up between a couple different videos to try and keep the time down. But we're going to start with the health and um, regeneration stats up at the top. Uh, these are pretty self-explanatory. Um, health is just the amount of health that the NPC has. When you look at, if I were to go into survival, when you look at your health bar, your 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 health is broken up into hearts, and then each heart is broken up into two hearts, or a half a heart. Um, so your health is equal to 20, uh, two points per heart. By default, so is the NPC, they're at 20. This value can be set to 1. It can be set to insanely high numbers. Um, it might not let me go that high. If I go that high, it tries to reset it to the lowest number that it has, which was 32,000 and something. So, obviously we don't need the health that high, but I'll put it at 200. I believe that's what the Ender Dragon's at, somewhere around there. But when you go and fight them, this will wear down. Um, so however much damage your weapon does, plus critical hits, all that goes into reducing this number right here. So if they are hostile, or if you want them to not die with certain, like if they get, if they fall off a cliff or something, just set this up high. Uh, next we have aggro range. Um, that's the range that if they're set to be hostile, when somebody that they're going to attack gets within that number of blocks of them, they'll go after them. Um, this has a couple other settings that we'll look at uh, when we get to the AI tab, but this is the base value for the aggression. So if I set that to 1, I literally have to get to the block next to it before it would turn on me and start attacking me. <clears throat> All right, and the max this goes to 64. If you try and go higher, it should drop it back down to 64. Um, and when you start getting that large of a number, it some bugs can come into play um, just because of the amount of distance land has to travel, all that kind of stuff. All right, any questions so far, Sai? Nope. Uh, that, I think that's pretty well explained. All right. Next up is the creature type. Now, this one is one that you may not, it may not be as self-explanatory. We have three types, normal, undead, and arthropod. This mainly has to do with enchantments and how enchantments will affect this NPC. So normal, it acts just like a person or a regular player. So any damage done to it, it's not affected by any special enchantments. 
um, undead, it will take any damage, increased damage that an undead mob would take, it takes as well. So if you have, I think it's, uh, is it smiting that increases the damage to um, zombies? I believe so. So if you had a sword that did, that had smiting, that smiting would affect this NPC if you had it set to undead. And with arthropod, same thing. The Bane of Arthropods um, enchantment would affect this creature like it was a spider. So that's, that's the main purpose of this creature type up here. Um, it can also uh, set some things... Actually, sorry, I take that back. That, the other stuff that normally would affect, say, an undead creature like Burning in the Sun is set down here, which we'll get to later, down at the bottom. So we'll move on to respawning. Now, just a warning, um, we're working in the 1.7.2 version of the custom NPCs mod. Respawning has been modified with the newest version, um, which once we get done going through everything um, with the tutorials, I'll come back and highlight anything that's updated. Um, most of it's the same, it's just accessed in a different way. You have a couple of new options. But under respawn, we have the, t the um, whether it respawns at all. So if we have yes, time, this is 20 ticks. No, 20 seconds. Some of these are ticks, some of them are seconds. This one is seconds. So this, if it died, it would take 20 seconds, and then it would respawn <clears throat> where you originally placed it. Okay. Now... With respawn, did you have a question? Nope. Okay. Respawn along. With respawn, if we click on yes, it'll switch to day. That means it'll only respawn during the daytime. So if it dies at night, it won't spawn again until dawn. <clears throat> if it dies anytime during the day, it'll follow this time. Same thing goes for at night, but it's the other way around. Um, if it dies during the day, it won't respawn till dusk. I see. And then you can have it set to not respawn at all. Um, right. That can be a pain, especially if you do this on accident. It's a care. It's an NPC you want around. If you don't make a copy of it, it dies. It's gone. You'd have to reprogram it from scratch. Um, time. I normally set that kind of low because most of my NPCs, most of the time when they die, it's on accident, or it's a type of challenge like a a wave kind of thing with uh, player versus NPC combat so I want the NPCs constantly coming after the players so I set that low. Um, high times can be for something if it's part of a quest um, you're supposed to go kill this NPC then when you're done you don't want it respawning right away or if it has good drops you don't want it respawning right away. Um, I actually do have a question. <clears throat> yeah. So, um, you know, with, with that uh, respawning, mm -hmm. um, if I have it set to no, I've set my uh, character over here to no. Okay. But, but when I try to hit him, right, I, I can't punch him. He doesn't take any damage. How do I set it so that he actually takes damage? We haven't gotten there yet because that's actually involved in factions. Okay. Which is, which is more, quite a bit more advanced than the point that we're at right now. No worries. Continue on. <laughs> All right. So we will get to that. Um, it'll be after we do inventory. We'll start getting into the advanced tab, which factions is right there. So the last setting in the health options up top is hide dead body. And I'm actually going to go ahead and set this to um, aggressive. Oh, he's, he's killing you, man. Yes, he is. <laughs> All right. Luckily, I had the aggro range a little low. <laughs> but what we have is high dead body. So if this is on no, and I go ahead and grab a weapon, and I kill him. Oh, he's on 200 right now. We'll drop this down to 10 so it's easier to show it. So now that he's dead, with the options that I have set, 
with the not hiding the dead body, it's going to lay there. How long? Until it respawns. Ah. And it should be 20 seconds, but I'm going to speed up the process. Oh, delete. There we go. <clears throat> now, if we have it so that high dead body is equal to yes, we kill this guy. Once he's dead, his body vanishes until he respawns. Ah. So, that's just the simplest ah, cosmetic thing where if you don't want to see dead bodies lying around, put them to high dead body, yes. Um, if you don't care, leave it at no, just one less setting to change. And you notice how when they respawn, they go back to their original starting position. Um, and that's just, that's a nice feature to keep track of where they are. All right, let's see. Um, that is going to be it for this video. We want to keep it short, so it's only a couple minutes. You know exactly what's going to be in here. But this is the options that we went over. The health, aggro range, creature type, hiding the dead body, and respawning in the respawn time. Next, we'll go over this bottom section because it ties in with the health. Um, and then after that, in the episode after that, we'll go over the combat settings in the middle here. But with that, I'd like to give a shout out to Mr. S. Frenari over here. Thank you very much, sir. Yep. And don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And uh, S. Frenari, do you have a channel? Absolutely. S. <clears throat> Frenari. Uh, there will be a link in the description to his channel, so you can go check him out. And then... Uh, yeah, that's that. And with that, Trust and Lies out.